Oh, hi. Are you considering adding a natural stone to your Japanese whetstone kit? I highly recommend you do. Let's go take a look at some. All right, so what's with all the notes? So uh, when I test out Japanese natural stones, I grade them by their hardness and their fineness. I use a scale uh, from one to five. This is very inexact. It's not like grading natural stone grit that can be done scientifically. This is just my opinion after, you know, doing, doing a lot of these, but uh, it's very subjective. So I'm coming at it from the knife sharpening perspective rather than the razor sharpening perspective. Uh, but I grade from hardness and fineness, scale to one to five. Most of the stones uh, that we're going to be working with here land in the three to four and a half zone. Sometimes we get harder ones. Sometimes they're softer ones, but it's a little uncommon. Uh, so I just make these notes and um, I'll show you how I, uh, how I do this. So um, start off with the um, stone. I, I usually like to, to put a little thin sheet of water on it and see if there's any lines that, uh, that pop up right away. This can be an indication of some small fissures. So this one has a couple. It's fairly common. Um, and you don't want to see the giant, uh, big giant ones. And if we have lines that are really dark, we'll want to make sure that those aren't toxic. And we'll take a look at what that means in a sec. But here you can see that the water is soaking up into the stone. This can be an indication and a first um, kind of like clue as to what to expect from the stone, how hard it's going to be. So a stone that's soaking up water like this might be a little bit soft. So uh, let's put a little bit more water on it and take a look. I use the same knife uh, all the time. I'm using a uh, Ironclad Shirogami 2 by Mutsumi Hino Ura, and then um, also a uh, Blue Number 2 from uh, Nakagawa-san. And I've just used these knives so much, I really know what to expect from them. So um, that helps me zero out some other variables. But it, I think it's important to try the blue and the white because they can be different. So here right away, we're getting some uh, metal coming up off onto the stone. And I'm also getting a little bit of stone in there. This kind of chalky uh, gray appearance of this mud shows that there's some uh, of the stone coming loose right as soon as I start sharpening. But there's more metal than stone here. So that's a nice sign. That's a bit of a somewhat fast cutting stone. Uh, can look at the initial finish that we get. If it's wet, it's a little bit harder to see it. Dry gives you a little bit better of a view. Just getting started here. This would be a kind of cloudy, hazy finish or a Kasumi finish. This might be somewhat analogous and cutting to about a 4,000, three to 4,000 maybe. Maybe not three, probably four. It looks like a three, but it's a little bit, it cuts a little finer. But let's keep going. I like these little droppers so I can control and get a very tiny amount of water if I want. Now I'm going flat down onto this main wide bevel where I'm going to be working on mild steel and hard steel at the same time. And I can kind of tip up the knife so that I'm working on the steel more than the iron, uh, or mild steel rather. And that gives me a different feel. This one is really easy. It's just kicking up mud and it's taking off metal really smoothly. It's not scratchy. It's not, um, it's not sensitive to how much pressure I'm laying in. Let's uh, give it a try with this guy. So the blue steel has a much busier alloy. Sometimes it doesn't get along with stones that the white steel does fine with. It is a bit more wear reactive. And so initially we can see we get just a little bit less metal coming up onto the stone, but it's still going, going nicely. It's not feeling scratchy. It's not feeling, uh, you know, like it needs some finessing. This is, I'm putting some pressure down now and stones can be very sensitive to pressure. This one didn't feel uh, gritty or scratchy with a lot of pressure. Let's take a look at our finish here. And this is a 
nice hazy finish is what these stones are famous for and this is going to be a little bit of a finer finish than what it looks like if you're look, used to what the finish from synthetic stones looks like. So uh, for a synthetic stone, this would be a coarser finish visually judging than what this is from, the, from our natural. But I would say this is probably analogous to about a 4,000 grit. You can't put a grit number on these, though. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. So this is a very easy going stone. I graded this one at a level three uh, hardness and a level three and a half fineness, just a little bit finer than it is hard. Easy, buttery, and an even Kasumi finish. So this one is great. This is like your, your golden retriever of stones. That's a Shobudani. Oftentimes these Shobudanis are like that. Not always, but often. All right, so this is a uh, little bit on the other end of the spectrum here from what I found uh, with this little batch of stones. This is a Iwatani. Um, sometimes these are harder than the Shobus, but uh, not always. Put a little water on there, see, see what we get. There's a couple little tiny lines, and those would be some tiny little fissures. Uh, if those are really like angled off the corner. Sometimes that can indicate a problem later down the road. Little chips can come off of stones. You can glue them back, but it's nice to see this stuff if it's there. Um, there's nothing here that's really worrying me though. So let's give it a shot. I'm getting some mud coming up off of this as well, but it definitely feels a bit harder and the mud is just a bit darker than that last one. So this is a bit more metal than mud, which is um, an indication of a harder stone. It's easy though, it's not scratchy. Sometimes the hard stones can feel um, a little bit scratchy. This is still self slurrying a bit, but A little bit harder than that last one. It's not super sensitive to pressure though, which is kind of nice. So it's a easy to use stone. It's a bit brighter. A little hard to see. We kind of have a jumble of different finishes going on here, but we're looking at this zone here mostly. So a little bit shinier than the last one. I would say that this is a finer stone definitely feels harder. I'd put this at a level four uh, with a four to four and a half finish. This one can be graded a bit finer and uh, harder stones oftentimes you can get a little bit finer cut off of them. You take a little bit of their used mud and very very lightly start working it. So here I'm almost hydroplaning over the surface of the stone and we're going to let this mud get broken down. I'm putting very little pressure down so I don't build up more fresh slurry from the host stone. I'm using just the mud, ideally, although I'm probably bringing up a little bit of fresh particle from the stone surface. But here, it starts to get a little bit drier, starts to feel a little bit sticky. And this is where it starts to get a little bit finer on a harder stone often. Not every stone will do this, but this one does. So you can see here, this mud is very chalky and dry. I stopped before it started getting kind of choppy. And you got to be very careful with your pressure at this point. And this got it a little bit finer. Not a huge amount, but a, a bit more. It's getting into this kind of sub-mirror territory here. But this is a really easy stone to use still. Um, sometimes stones at this hardness level can be a little sensitive to pressure. Let's give it a shot with the algami and see if it's as consistent. So the one thing with natural stones that they vary a lot from synthetics is that synthetic stones 
cut pretty much the same across different steel types, barring really weird alloys. Natural stones, however, can cut differently on different alloys, so they're a little less predictable than synthetics. Synthetics will just cut harder, or sorry, quicker or slower with different steel types, but um, often giving you the same kind of finish. That was easy, and a fair amount of metal is coming up there. There is a little bit of, of mud in there, so some might say that this is not quite four. Uh, you know, it depends. For a razor sharpener, maybe this is softer than what I think of it as for a, as a knife sharpener, but again, it's kind of subjective. But um, pretty bright, hazy finish here. Nice contrast between the, um, the two steels here. That's always a, a kind of bonus. And... Um, yeah, that's a really lovely finish, and that felt really nice on this blue steel. That's a, that's a great stone. So here's a stone that has this black line on it, and sometimes these are a mineral deposit in the stone that can be hard and scratchy. So in order for us to ascertain whether this is going to be a problem, we'll go ahead and take the edge of our knife See if we can catch it on there. If it feels hard and if it feels like you're hitting something mineralized, then it's going to need to get scratched out. Uh, initially here, I don't feel anything. You can also sharpen over it and see if it uh, scratches your uh, finish. So you'll feel a kind of grittiness on these. I'm not, I'm not picking up anything. It's possible that further into the stone it's harder and it needs to be scratched up but here no problem so there's japanese names for all these things that we've been talking about and if you want to learn the japanese names that's awesome you don't have to to use these i think a lot of people feel intimidated by japanese stones that they need to learn tons of different uh names of <clears throat> the different mines, the different strata levels of the stones, the appearance of the stones. Um, it, you know, it can have a, a really long name when you add up all of these things. But really, ultimately, what's important is how hard is the stone? How fine is the stone? Does it get along with a variety of steels? Does it, um, you know, how easy is it to work? And this is the, the question if you're looking at start using these that's important the great thing about these is not just the aesthetics of the finish they make and the finishes are really beautiful but the most important thing from my perspective is that the cutting feel and the edge life of these edges is really phenomenal so natural stones are made up of little radiolarian uh, skeletons these are the skeletons of single celled animals that have a silica uh, skeleton. They're kind of like a little glass snowflake, essentially. These all settled to the bottom of the seafloor many millions of years ago, uh, and these rocks were formed, and they weren't uh, compacted uh, so much that they became glassy like, uh, like flint. They stayed like a hard mud and can be used as a sharpening stone. And these clumps work together uh, in Sorry, these particles work together in clumps or singly, and so the presence of slightly irregular grit in the form of clumps of particles of these, uh, these radiolarian flakes and individual ones and then breaking down possibly while you're uh, using them makes for a slightly uneven edge. So uh, it's, there's a, a, an idea, and it makes sense to me, that uh, the edge from a natural stone is more like a shark tooth where you have a serrated uh, tooth like this rather than a straight saw tooth from a synthetic stone that might have a more homogeneous grit. But what this slightly um, irregular grit size does is it gives us this hazy appearance as opposed to like a bright, shiny, shiny mirror looking finish. Uh, but each of those little points is going to deform and dull at a different rate uh, during cutting. So on a very homogeneous uh, polished edge, all of the points that make the sawtooth edge 
will be deformed and damaged at the same rate, so the knife would dull uh, all at the same rate. Whereas here, because we have a kind of slightly irregular edge, each of these little points is going to be dulling at different rates, and so it cuts a bit longer. And that is my experience using these, is that they have a nice long edge life. Um, but the only thing is they don't work with all steels. They don't work with some stainless steels that have really obnoxious, uh, super high alloy contents. Um, so they're not super predictable. But if you're using carbon steels, if you're using uh, a lot of Japanese knives, and this can include a lot of stainless knives, just go a little bit softer with your stones if you're looking to use natural stones on your uh, Japanese stainless knives. It can be a really, really wonderful cutting feel. Uh, these last a super long time. They seem a bit more expensive than synthetics, but these wear much, much slower than synthetics because they are essentially all grit rather than a synthetic stone, which is grit and binder. But I uh, hope that helps get you started. Highly recommend jumping in here. You don't have to spend a gang of money to get a great stone. These little copa or offset, off uh, size stones can be a really great way to start. And um, yeah recommend them highly. Thanks for watching.